Okay, so with the suspension done and the front of the car, or the front of the chassis, put together, then it's time to start looking back at the engine. Now there's not there's nothing wrong with it. I'm not taking it apart. What I am going to do is give it a good clean, or as, as good a clean as I can manage with it out of the car, and change some seals and some gaskets just to, you know, because it's a good opportunity. I um, will probably take the sump off and I've ordered some plastic age so I can, can check the bearings because this is a good opportunity to do so. I uh, don't expect there to be much wrong. This is probably an approximately 20,000 mile engine. Um, as far as I know it was rebuilt around about when the car went round the clock and it's done about 20,000 miles since then, it's about, about 1992. But obviously we don't know what's going to what we're going to find until we take it apart. First thing to do is going to be take the gearbox off. I've got an overdrive gearbox to replace it with. And it's also going to let me get to have a look at the rear seal. Because doing that in the car, just on it in Spitfire, is not... Uh, yeah, well it's going to be easy when I've got the engine out. And that's also going to let me look at this thing. My uh, neighbour is moving out and uh, turned up to say he had an engine stand. So that's probably going to be handy. It also needs to clean, but what I'm most interested in is the mounting plate and whether I need to build some extensions to actually be able to bolt it to the engine. I might do that anyway, just so it's a little bit further out from the stand. So yeah, let's get the engine going out, drag the engine out the corner, see about cleaning it up, and do it from there. Okay, I've got the engine out to the entrance of the garage. Can't take it outside very easily because the driveway slopes off. Oh, I'm sure I could take it outside easily, just to end up at the bottom of the hill. I'll give that a go over with some some gunk and a rinse off just to get the worst of the muck off. I suspect from the condition of some of these bits that they were sprayed with whatever was on the chassis as well. Big thick gunky stuff. Anyway, I'm gonna let that dry a bit, then I'll pull the gearbox off. Not in a good way. It's quite perceptible movement on the uh, crankshaft. So probably, well, at minimum, I am probably going to need to put thrust washers in. Oh dear. Let's hope it's just that. Yeah, there's all the end plate and flywheel clutch off. Now this looks rather like this looks like there's quite a lot of oil all around here, so I suspect the seal was knackered to some certain extent. This is interesting. So my um, pivot bush has got grease in it, which it shouldn't it shouldn't do. And I can see it. Let's 
see on the centre of the clutch too. It's obviously come out of the pivot bushing. And it doesn't need it because it's bronze. Uh, and also because it's right next to the clutch, which you don't really want uh, grease on. And I think I've just I've narrowly avoided that. This was done by a clutch specialist in, in Guildford in about 2008. And they made a huge song and dance about having to do an old car. They obviously had no idea. No idea what they're up to. Anyway, we're here now. Um, so I'm going to kind of have a look at this and what I can do with regard to fitting the engine stand on because we're really going to need it now because of that crankshaft play look, needs looking at. Yeah, I think this is this is going to be it for me for today. Um, I'm going to have a think about what I want to do to build build some sort of engine holder device. So onto this engine stand. The mounting section is not going to work very well with the Herald engine just as it is. I mean I could probably sort of squeeze it on there maybe. But then it's only going to be held on with two bolts, for one thing. And leaning over to one side of the engine. So what I'm going to try and do is take some of this, bend up some long U-shapes, and then weld a bit of tubing to the ends. So we'll end up with a bit of tube and put a bolt through into the engine and then a channel through which we can bolt to the existing stand. I think that'll work. And I think once this is doubled over it'll be thick enough. The only question is, am I going to be able to Am I going to be able to bend it? Well, and is it going to hold the engine on properly? To find that out, the crane will be staying uh, attached while we test it. So I'm going to cut, cut some of that off and uh, see how we go. I decided to change tactic. Uh, I don't really like how this is bent. You can see it's on the, the hole, and obviously that's given it much more of an angle. Also, the width I've got, despite that being what I was, I was aiming at, I still think it's going to work. So I found some more, some bit of thicker bit of steel, and I'm going to cut some strips out of this and do it as a flat bar with a, a rod or tube on the end. A little bit thicker, but I think they'll work together. Yes, yeah, so I'm just kind of trying to figure out where whether these are a bit long, maybe, and how long I want them to be, and where I might want to drill some holes. Yes, yeah, so I'm gonna have a bit more play with this and see two months next. So I was kind of calling in in the corner, offering this up to the engine and seeing whether it's going to fit, and then I thought, well, actually, I have the back plate. Um, which will give me the pattern of bolt holes without 
I can do it on the bench. <coughs> so I'll give them that clean up. It's, it's kind of interesting. It looks like this is so we're looking at the flywheel side. It looks like something's got up behind the flywheel and bashed about. We should have a look to see if there's, there's uh, similar markings on the inside of the flywheel. Anyway. I'm going to see, I'm going to keep going, having a look again as to how I'm going to fit this up. I'm obviously basing it on what's going to fit a Triumph small car engine at the moment, but it is going to be somewhat adjustable, so if I ever need to use it for anything else, I should be able to. Uh, it looks like they could easily be half as long as they are. So maybe maybe that's what I'll do. I'll do use um, two pieces, cut them in half. Obviously it's not going to be that difficult if I want to. I need something bigger to make something bigger. If these strips work as I think they should. But yeah, let's do that. I didn't really realise quite how late it got yesterday when I was working, so I had to stop. But what I've kind of concluded is that I cut these bits in half so my adjustable mounting point will be only that long and that's going to fit for this this engine and I can always build something else if I need something longer so I'm getting them cut in half a couple of holes drilled and then I'll probably prepare some bits I've got some some wheels to go on the engine stand, so I'm going to prepare some some plates, so I'll be able to you know, obviously the other way up, but I'll be able to bolt on. I'll be able to weld the plate to the bottom of the rail, and then bolt these on on their orientation or another. It's not my uh, arms, I guess. Drilled, cut and drilled. I've just had a quick play to check that actually the back plate will go on. Which obviously going to tell me that the engine will go on. Now, what I need to do now is cut some bits of tubing, which I've got sat there, which will then weld to the end of each of these arms to give a bit of standoff from from the main body of the stand holder thing. Because oh, I've got two cut, two tubes, standoff tubes, and they're going to work. So I just wanted to check before, just in case I needed to end up making them longer or something like that. So, I'm going to get the other two done, it's going to be a bit later for me, but instantaneous if you're watching, <laughs> then um, get them welded on, and I'll yeah, be able to see, hopefully this is going to hold the engine on the stand, I mean it, it's the same design as I've seen for commercial ones, so we should be fine. It has been used previously, extensively as far as I know. I'm just the ones that uh, you buy have a, a lot more kind of structure out to the front, but then they're probably designed for more modern, heavier engines than than this because this stand is 30 or 40 years old. So. Period correct. Well, not even keep it out 30 years ago, it's quite, it's not, not even period correct. I don't know, for the Spitfires, last Spitfires, maybe. No, it's 40, isn't it? 80. <coughs> anyway, I'm going to get that done and then we'll see. And hopefully, it isn't going to fall off. So there's the four arms made. 
and they're quite hot. So I'll let them cool down and then check that it's gonna it's gonna work. It's gonna the engine is gonna stand on the stand. And then when that's done I found it's a bit of old TV stand and I'm gonna use that to it happens to be a nice width to fit these casters. So I'm going to cut some plates out that will then weld to the bottom of these uh, these rails to bolt the bolt the casters to. Okay, so I've got the engine moved out a bit. Gonna get the newly made holder on and then see how it works on the stand. I've decided to go the lazy, if well, lazy, pragmatic route. Um, this this stand, I'm pretty sure, it was intended for an engine you can mount from the side. So you know the weight would then be sitting here rather than over the end. And I could have bought some metal and reworked it, but by the time I'd done that, I might as well have bought an engine stand. So, I'm going to put this together and then go and see how, uh, let's see what the state is in the, uh, of the thrust washers in the crankshaft. Well. been supplied without bolts. I see if I've got anything to throw it together with. Uh, that's, that's annoying. It turns out I'm missing so much of the commercial stands that even if I if I manage to find some bolts I can't put it together. Um, major bit being uh, a wheel, one of the arms holding the engine on, and the kind of whole front, whole whole rear kind of cross piece. So, because I really want to know what's on the bottom of this engine, I'm going to plan C something like that. And I remembered I had on the wall back there some bits of an old bed, which are 
nice thick steel. So I think what I'm going to do is cut one of these in half and bolt it to this home build and see how that works. Fish out a whole lot of a whole lot of junk to get to them. Spare herald sill, spare um, Spitfire bumper, all that sort of thing. So I'm going to give that a go probably tomorrow now. See, yeah, uh, it'll hold up. Okay, so that's now it's now hopefully going to be a bit more stable. So and put put some tools away and have a go at uh, putting the engine on this and seeing how it uh, how it withstands the weight well this is also a bust so, crane is in place well, look at the flex in that So it's not wobbling on the floor anymore, but uh, it's wobbling in the in the steel of the stand. So I am just going to have to wait till till I get the bits for the proper one. Actually, while I've got it double supported, I am at least going to drain the oil and see if I can get the. See if I can get the sump off and have some assessment of if I need to be looking for a new block or not. Or a new crankshaft or something along those lines. So, oil's drained. It's mostly in the bottle. Oh, yeah. The flow was a bit too much for the funnel. I thought I could uh, get it straight into the waste bottle. Anyway, I uh, figure while it's in this position, Temporarily, I can do a measurement of the envelope and see quite how horrendous looking it is. Because it is visible movement, so that's obviously it's quite large. Uh, let's find out how much quite large it is. We're going to manage that. So there's the solvents. Uh, it's 0.102 to 0.203 millimeters. So we're kind of out. Um, let's just still have a look and see. Check for actual damage. Now for me, it's quite some time later, and I finally got an engine sand. That's. Uh, has all the parts and isn't hopefully not going to be wobbling. So it's a commercial one, so it should at least uh, do what it's supposed to. <coughs> yeah, I got sent two. Sent one that was incomplete. Offered some replacement parts, which turned out not to include all of the replacement parts. Sent the second one. Which has also been complete and now included some random electronic waste, so I've gone and bought another one from another supplier. Because it's now been a ridiculous amount of time and I haven't been able to get on with this job. So, I'll dig crane out again and put that uh, onto a stand. And there we go, Fine. <laughs> finally landed on a stand. So, let's get it uh, flipped over and see.
see what's what in the bottom end. Okay, so let's have a look. I'm looking and without not, not without knowing a great deal about this, this bearing does not look horrendous. And that this isn't has no steel in it. Well, oh, it's not magnetic. Is it the DIY alternative? The outer's bus I don't know. <coughs> is this because the crank has run into has run into the block at some time? And this is a was a way of saving it? Definitely the, sp the, the space here is that size, and if we put this in, it would just. Yeah, look, we have, we have some bolts here. They're not normal, are they? Well, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure they're not normal, are they? I think it's probable, well my guess now is the block has, the crankshaft has hit the block at some point in the past, and this, and this um, DIY thrust washer have been a uh, attempt to salvage it. Which is really sad if that's the case, because this is the car. This, this is the car's original engine. The 
bearings 10 under, 10 thou under. Yeah. Knew it had been worked on. Pistons are 30 over. I know that. I remember that from a long time back. Okay, so I've now I've convinced myself that this is what's happened. That at some point, that at some point the crankshaft has hit the block and damaged it. And so someone's solution was to make this custom thrust washer, which requires these little hex head screws on the. Um, the bearing cap in order to hold it in place. I would say it's not lasted. Well, it's it's, it's lasted a reasonable amount of time. I've had this car quite a while. Well, lasted, I guess. It's clearly worn quite heavily. So, so well, I'm rather suspecting I might have to go engine shopping. I'm mean, gonna have a bit of a. Don't know. <laughs> Think, ask questions. See if I can see if I can keep using it. I'm, I'm really, I'm really feeling I'm not gonna be able to keep using this block, which is a shame because it's the one that this original to the car. Oh well. Uh, so because of that, I'm going to put put together whatever footage I've got um, of me faffing around trying to get the engine on the stand and turn it over. Um, I don't think there's much point in going any further with this till till I know where, whether I, I need to find another one. In other news, I've got someone, hopefully got someone who paint the bulkhead. So that's exciting. And, and for now, thanks for watching and uh, see you next time. Thank mm -hmm. you.